Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I have the keys to the all new 2022 Jaguar F-Type R all wheel drive convertible. This model is finished off in a very special SVO tourmaline brown metallic and it has an MSRP just over $120,000. And to start off today's review, we're going to take a look at what powers this F-Type. Underneath the hood is the five liter supercharged V8 engine paired to the eight speed ZF automatic transmission and it pumps out 575 horsepower around 6,500 RPM and 516 pound-feet of torque around 3,500 RPM. That power is sent through the all-wheel drive system. This weighs in right around 3,900 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in three and a half seconds up to its top speed of 186 miles an hour. It'll also do the quarter mile in 11.7 seconds at 121 miles per hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 18 and a half gallons You'll expect to see around 16 miles per gallon in the city and 24 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 103.2 inches. Its overall length is 176. It has a width of 74.2, a height of 51 and a half inches, and its ground clearance measures in at 3.9 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Jaguar F-Type R, let's start off with this grille. The surround for it is finished off in gloss black and there are plenty of cutouts in this mesh to provide maximum cooling to the supercharged engine. The Jaguar badge is front and center as well as having the R badge over on the driver's side. There's also parking sensors located throughout this with the F-Type badge in the lower section. And there's even more parking sensors on the functional air inlets on both sides. As you can tell, there are cutouts in the back to provide a lot more aerodynamics for this model. And it even has the R body kit. So the lower section of the bumper is part of that. This is a very low car, but it's going to have really good aerodynamics and performance to it. And up on the hood, there are functional heat extraction vents in the top section of it with really nice lines running their way to the windshield as well as to the base of the A-pillars. And this even has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals with a very nice sleek design in between the bodywork for the hood as well as the bumper and just underneath it. You can also turn these on and off with the key fob if you'd like to, but they have a really nice sleek presence to them. And this just has a mean front end, very distinctive for this Jaguar. And as we move on to the side, this has the upgraded wheels. These are 20 inches, finished off in gloss black. And just behind them are the upgraded brakes. They say Jaguar on them. This will do 70 to zero and 155 feet. And the front rotors measure in at 14.9 inches and 14.8 inches in the rear. There's even another functional trim piece just behind the front tires, finished off in gloss black with the Jaguar logo on the lower section. This also has body colored side mirrors that have the integrated turn signal in a really nice sleek design for the side profile. More of that body kit for the lower side skirt. And this even has a color matched top that matches the interior very nicely. And last up for the side is the size of these rear fender arches covering these tires. They poke out a good bit, giving it a really clean design. And then last up in the rear, this has an active spoiler. Jaguar is on there and you can push a button on the interior to activate that. The third brake light is just underneath that and this has LED taillights with a really nice sleek design matching the front ones of course. The R badge is over on the passenger side this time. This has a backup camera just underneath the license plate with the quad tip dual exhaust. There's even more of that body kit just underneath the exhaust. Really nice and aggressive middle diffuser with plenty of cutouts. There's even the reverse lights as well as parking sensors and the gloss black trim. And so with the exterior wrapped up for this Jaguar F-Type, let's move on to the rear cargo space. So I can use the button on the key fob to unlatch it or use the button just up underneath it. And with that released, we can open this up. Now with the convertible top down, it doesn't hinder any of the cargo space. So as you can tell, it's currently down. This is all the space that you get. It's not a crazy amount, but for a sports car, I like how deep the center compartment is and it goes upwards just a little bit. You can tell there's a strap up there along with some dome lights. So you have a little bit of a shelf where you could place items as well as a bag or two, maybe some groceries. Two people could easily pack for a weekend trip and place all of their items in the back. And then up on the top, there are two grab handles making this very easy to close. And so with that wrapped up, let's make our way to the interior now. Where you'll see the door handle is currently flush with the bodywork. All I need to do is push on this left side, push on that button as well. The power folding side mirrors will automatically fold out. And from here, I can grab the door handle and easily open up the door. Now, in order to close it, all I need to do is push this flush with the rest of the bodywork and everything will lock. So it's really nice to have that design for this door handle. 
And with this opened up, we have the brown leather interior with all the white stitching. Really nice design on the backside. More gloss black to tie in with all the exterior trim. This even has memory seating adjustments, all the automatic seating adjustments as well. Lock and unlock with the 10 speaker Meridian sound system. There's the window controls along with the side mirror adjustments and a little bit of storage space down in the lower section of the door. And as we move on to the door sill, our badge is down in that brushed aluminum. And we have the same leather for these seats with Jaguar and this nice cutout. The Jaguar is also embroidered in the upper section. More of that stitching, a really nice sport bucket seat. Same trim as surrounding the floor mats as well. And with the roof all the way up at five foot 10, it's time to work my way in where I do have to step down over this door sill, but it is easy to enter and exit. The door also opens very wide. So for a low car, it still makes it easy, which is great. And the steering wheel is covered in solid and perforated leather with black stitching. There's even a black stripe in the upper section. The R badge is down below. Over on the left side, all of these are for the digital gauge cluster, which we'll come back to. There's even Bluetooth and voice commands along with mode for the stereo. On the right side is the heated steering wheel as well as all the cruise control settings. And this even has steering wheel mounted paddle shifters finished off in brushed aluminum. But let's bring this to life. With my foot on the brake, that button is located over on the right side and we can bring this to life. And on this digital gauge cluster, on the left side is the speedometer as well as the fuel gauge. On the right side is the tack and the engine temperature. And then right in the middle, currently it's showing the navigation. If I push on the OK button, we can pull up a lot more information, go through the displays, look at the layout, units, language, all of that information. If I scroll back up to the top, there's also vehicle settings, so you can go through the exterior lighting as well as some of the convenience features. So if I go into that, we have reverse for the mirrors where the side mirrors will actually aim down. So that way you can get some better visibility. There's the wiper blade settings, your gear shift paddles, a lot of cool features to go through. There's vehicle information, so you can look at your oil level, your TPMS, some more tire information as well. Even pull up the music, look at all of the driver assistance, like the steering assist, the collision avoidance, and all of that. Look at your trip information as well, and then we're back to the displays. It's a really nice gauge cluster, and I love the leather that covers the top of it with more of that white stitching. Gives it more of a sunken in look. And on the left side of the steering wheel, there's a dimmer switch for the gauges, as well as the trunk release, the lane keeping assist, as well as a light control. There's one air vent, more of that two-tone design, which gives it a great look. And right in the middle, there's actually two air vents up here that will pop up when that is on. So with the center dial, if I just rotate that to turn on the fan speed, you can see those adjust. I'm going to shut it back off for audio purposes, but it's really cool how those will go away. And just underneath that is a 10 inch touchscreen system that has a lot of information to go through. Right now it's on the home screen. If I go all the way to this side here, this is a customizable page. So you can place any items there that you'd like to. And then we have the split style for navigation and media along with phone. And then all of these icons for Android Auto, your contacts, you can go into the valet mode, the Apple CarPlay, even the uh, dynamics. There's even ambient lighting that you can adjust to. And in the lower section is all the presets. So I can push on home, quickly get here. There's different settings to go into. So just by pushing on that, you can go through all of those as needed. There's a shortcut to the navigation to pull that up in full screen, as well as going to your phone when you have that paired, being able to go through the music, of course. If I turn it back on, everything will pop back up as you already saw, or you can use the dial that is located down below. Next to that, we have a shortcut to the camera system. So currently it's looking at the rear view camera and we have some sensors over on that right side, which you can turn on and off just by pushing on that button. And the last one is the fun button. So this is for dynamic mode where you can go through the engine the gear shift, the steering, even the suspension with this active system to configure this the way that you'd like to. You can also pull up a lap timer and look at all that information, look at the G-force meter and even look at your throttle and braking. So it will show you a graph if you want to have some sporty driving in your Jaguar F-Type, it's cool to pull up that information. Just underneath that is all the climate controls as I already showed. So we have fan speed right in the middle as well as the temperature controls on both sides. And underneath that is some more toggles for your auto, your AC, there's the recirc. Hazards are right in the middle as well as the defrosters. There's the engine start stop button along with a 12 volt on that passenger side. There's even a grab handle too that has more of that two-tone design. 
Power and volume for the radio is located down below to the right of the shifter. On this left side is how you can go through the driving modes. So I pulled it all the way back for dynamic mode to go through all the information in the center gauge cluster. If I push it up once, that is for the normal setting. And if I push it up one more time, that is for rain, ice, and snow. So it's nice to see that you can go through those with this really cool race-inspired toggle switch. And then behind that is the electronic parking brake. There's the engine start stop feature, as well as being able to put up that rear wing. Traction control is also located down below, as well as the exhaust note button, which you already heard. And then to the right of that is how you can operate the convertible top. So just by pushing it down, that corresponds with the top going down. The windows will automatically go down. And in a matter of seconds, the entire top will fold away. You can also do this while moving under 30 miles an hour. So it's convenient to be able to do that so you don't have to come to a complete stop. And like I said, in a matter of seconds, we have it back up. The windows will also go all the way up. Really quick system to have. And just behind that, if I push on this button, there are two cup holders. And then right in the middle, more leather on the armrest. If I open this up, there are two USBs along with a 12 volt and a little bit of storage if you need to use that. There's even a storage net right in the middle where you could place other items if needed. And over on the passenger side, just by pushing on that button, the glove box will open up to reveal a lot of space. And we'll take a quick look at visibility as well as this interior again. Definitely a beautiful spec. And there's a few call buttons up in the middle as well. So now getting behind the wheel of this 2022 Jaguar F Type R. It's been a few days since I did the first portion of this video to today's test drive. I wanted to put a lot more miles on this car just to become more familiar with it, how it drives and everything that it has to offer. And so far this has been a really, really sweet sports car. I think from Jaguar you get the best of both worlds. You get all the luxury features and you get a very performance oriented sports car. We're actually on our way to the mountains right now. So stay tuned for all of those videos. Really handle it or testing out the handling, the performance. We're going to go pretty much flat out and handle it as best we can. So I went ahead and popped it into the R mode. That is the biggest thing that I love about this car is the fact that it can go from just a quiet cruiser to having the V8 exhaust note that you want in this car. We'll do that again here from second. Oh my gosh, that just sounds incredibly good. just before I started filming. If I pop it back into a normal mode, shut the exhaust off, even for a convertible, there's hardly any wind noise. You can hear maybe a little bit of road noise here or there. Traffic's not really loud. So I love how insulated this convertible is. Now, a few things that I do wanna talk about, not necessarily things that I don't like about this car, but for being the top of the line for the F-Type, being the R trim level, I do wish it had a few more things. Maybe these are options that I haven't seen, but I believe they should be standard. One of them is heated and cooled seats. This does not have either of those. And I feel like for the climate controls right in the middle, we have the multifunction button right in the middle where you can do the fan speed. You can push on that button to turn on and off the AC. The ones on the side are just for the temperature for your driver and passenger. Those dials, you should be able to push on them, twist it one way for cooled, twist it one way for heated seats. Again, I'm not sure if that's an option or not. And the other thing that I've noticed too is that this does not have adaptive cruise. There's also no forward facing camera. I feel like that's some technology that's offered in other Jaguars that should be incorporated into this. Yes, this is a sports car. It's gonna be a lot more performance oriented, but some of those daily driving characteristics would be nice to see. Backup camera does a really great job. I like the graphics for that screen. I will say that the interior storage space is nice. I love the size of the pockets in the door. We have a little bit of storage in the center. You can see my phone is right in the middle, but it's only big enough for one phone. I feel like there could be maybe a little bit more storage here, maybe behind both of these seats. There is a speaker behind both of the seats. And I know that with the top folding right down, you can't really have that much behind the seats. 
So it would be nice to see maybe a little bit more interior storage for some things like that. You know, there's no sunglass holder. As far as visibility goes with the top up, it's not really hard to see. Yes, it's bulky right here, uh, but it's a convertible. That's what you would expect right there. I can quickly see around that window if I need to. And we're gonna start off from first gear here. Here we go. You can feel some of that shift, which is awesome. It gives you more driver uh, feedback. I cannot wait to take this out on the mountains. And so now as we switch over to the POV angle behind the wheel of the Jaguar F Type R, you can take a look at this interior. It is very, very nice. I love all the materials. This is a really cool vehicle to be behind the wheel of. And one thing that I have noticed is that the navigation defaults to popping up in that center screen. So if you go through some of the information, it will automatically go back to that nav. I think that's really helpful, especially on the mountain roads that we're going to be on later today. We don't have to worry about the nav being on that center screen. You can see it right in the middle, which is great. So let's pop it over into R mode again. We'll put it into sport mode. The exhaust is on. <laughs> we have a few twisties for at least this review today. Woo, some pops in that exhaust. And with the top, you do have to be under 30 miles an hour. So if I slow down, we're at 26 miles an hour right now. And it's pretty cool that you can quickly do that on the fly. Some vehicles, you have to come to a complete stop. And once it beeps, roof is latched. And from, we'll start from first gear here. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> Such an amazing sounding car for sure. And just a view with the top down. No obstructions anywhere. It's a very comfortable vehicle to drive. There's not a whole lot of wind noise right here with the windows up. So hopefully that is going to help with the audio purposes for today. Comment down below, what do you think of the Jaguar F-Type R? I think if you want the best of both worlds, you want luxury, you have all of this leather, just a really nice interior, very nice premium feeling materials, but you want a sports car, you want that performance out of your luxury convertible, the F-Type is a cool option. I've always been a fan. I do wish that they still made or offered the manual transmission. That was back in maybe 2015, 2016, where you could get a manual. It is no longer, we have the ZF8 speed automatic, which is a quick transmission. So I really like that they didn't go with a normal torque converter or any automatic like that. The ZF is very quick to go through these shifts. And that sound is amazing. And we're gonna put the top up real quick. So that way we can just get some better audio very quick and easy to operate and then this is our last acceleration for today's video back into uh, sport mode there Woo! but that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive getting behind the wheel of the 2022 Jaguar F Type R all wheel drive convertible. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Give it a huge thumbs up if you did. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads and stay tuned for the mountain cruise videos coming very soon. Be sure to check those out. I'll see you guys in the next video.